In one of the most dangerous stretches of water on the planet, a documentary filmmaker is attacked by a great white shark. His chances of survival are next to nothing, especially when a whale seems to join the shark's attack. The giant animal appears to swallow the diver whole, and five minutes later, everybody is screaming. The most ominous and downright scary place on the planet is a thin strip of water between Dyer Island and Geyser Rock in South Africa. It was as part of a documentary film crew that Finn Hook ended up in this corner of the world. His crew had been trying to get a permit to freedive with apex predators for years, and that area was simply perfect for them. Geyser Rock is home to a colony of 60,000 Cape fur seals, while Dyer Island houses around 900 breeding pairs of African penguins. Both are staple diets for the great white shark, and that is why this strip of water is known as Shark Alley. The crew members were all shark lovers, and Finn in particular was a huge fan of great white sharks. A few years earlier, while spearfishing, he had experienced a life-altering encounter that would shape his destiny. He'd been in the water for several hours and was in the process of reeling in his line when a sudden, swift movement caught his attention. Finn maneuvered to investigate, only to be met with a striking sight, a massive black eye fixated upon him. It was a great white, and he had been left in awe. The sheer size of the predator was staggering, and its fierceness was visible at first sight. As the initial shock subsided, Finn found himself in a tense encounter with the formidable animal. He instinctively pushed back as the shark ventured uncomfortably close. The situation took an unexpected turn when the shark clamped its jaws around Finn's spear gun, rendering him momentarily paralyzed by the sheer surprise of it all. Swiftly regaining his composure, Finn reacted. He shoved a fist into the great white's eye and yanked his spear gun from its mouth. To his surprise, the shark relinquished the spear gun and swiftly disappeared into the depths, leaving him with an unforgettable tale of survival and a newfound perspective on the enigmatic world of these magnificent creatures. That was also the day Finn became hooked on great white sharks. He started making documentary films to educate the world about these magnificent creatures. Every time he took his camera into the depths, he risked his life. But for Finn, this was a small price to pay to follow his passion. Now in Shark Alley, the crew sat in the bobbing dinghy. They were ready to dive, but like always, they sat and observed first. They looked for clues that would give away the presence of one or more of the apex predators. Signs like small fish near the surface, or large numbers of seabirds diving into the water to feed. Today was particularly quiet. The seals on Geyser Rock were chilled, as were the penguins on Dyer Island. All of this indicated that little or no danger lurked beneath the surface of the water. Finally, Finn gave the signal that the dive was on. The crew strapped their gear on, and Finn checked his camera. Then, they flipped over the dinghy's side. It was eerily quiet underwater. Visibility was a bit murky, no more than 10 feet, and every so often the splash of a seal or a penguin near the surface got their attention. Finn was looking up at a seal's antics when he spotted something rare. Several large shapes were gliding past on the surface of the ocean. At first, he thought these were orcas. A pair of orcas, known as Port and Starbird, had been employing a ruthless strategy while hunting great whites around these two islands. This formidable duo had successfully disrupted the presence of large numbers of great whites in Shark Alley. Their presence would explain the lack of shark activity around him and the crew, Finn thought. But the large shapes didn't move like orcas. He turned on his back and focused his camera. Then he recognized them. It was a pod of southern right whales. The adult animals had formed a protective circle, and two calves were kept in the center. Finn immediately realized that they were protecting themselves against a perceived threat. His senses went on high alert. That could mean only one thing. There was one or more great whites in the area. He slowly circled around, staring into the murky depths, making sure not to miss anything. There were no seals or penguins in the water anymore. Another sure sign of danger. For a split second, Finn felt as if something was stalking him. As fast as the water would let him, he spun around. An enormous shape brushed past him, and from the creature's coarse skin, he knew it was a shark. The sheer size of the shape told him it was a great white, and the behavior, first brushing him, meant it was feeding, and it had singled him out for its next meal. Next would come a full-blown attack. Finn realized it would probably mean his end. In the murky water, he would not see the incoming shark in time. It would be upon him before he could react, and it could come 
from any direction. Finn went ice cold, and fear made his mind feel like sludge. He kept on circling, hoping to at least spot the shark's movement. Then it came, only not as Finn had expected. Something enormous pushed him upward from below. The creature struck him with enough force to completely drive the air from his lungs. His diving mask was slapped off his face, and salt water set fire to his lungs. While fighting for a breath and barreling upwards from the surface, propelled by some beast from the depths, Finn accepted the fact that he was done. His life was over. His diving cylinder had been knocked from his back and he had to hold his breath to keep from drowning. His lungs were aching and stars were dancing before his eyes. The giant creature then slipped to the side. In the next moment, Finn found himself in the marine animal's mouth. If this was a great white, he fleetingly thought, it was the biggest monster in the entire ocean. In Finn's mind, the way he was going to die bordered on the absurd. He could feel his feet dangling from the side of the gargantuan creature's mouth. He'd been expecting to feel the razor-sharp teeth rip into his flesh. Yet for some reason, that wasn't happening. Was the shark toying with him? Did sharks sometimes play with their food before ripping it apart? He didn't know, and he didn't care. He just hoped that when the moment came, it would all be over quickly. Water streamed into Finn's mouth and nose, and for a while he tried to hold his breath, but he couldn't hold out anymore. He gave up and opened his mouth, fully expecting water to gush in and drown him. However, he realized he could breathe. Instead of water, fresh air streamed into his lungs, and that's when he dared to open his eyes. As the world around him came into focus, he saw the rest of the crew standing upright on the dinghy a short distance away, screaming at the top of their lungs. They must have surfaced during his attack, he thought. The rubber boat was racing towards him at full throttle. Finn realized that the creature that had attacked him had backed off. Was it preparing for another strike? He didn't know. Would the rubber dinghy reach him in time? He didn't know that either. After what seemed like an eternity and then some, the boat swung in beside him. Wasting no time, the crew pulled him in from the water as if he were a rag doll. The story that they told him next was entirely unbelievable. Underwater, the crew had been watching Finn as he filmed the pod of southern right whales. They noticed the great white before it brushed him and knew an attack was imminent. They also immediately knew that Finn was the target prey, and yet there was nothing they could do. Suddenly, out of the dark blue depths, one of the southern right whales swam up under Finn. Initially, it pushed him towards the surface, and then rolled on its side and took him in its mouth. Great whites are natural enemies to the whales, especially in pods where calves are present. The whale must have realized Finn was under attack from its natural enemy and rushed in to help. Once the shark had retreated and the whale had reached the surface, it had simply allowed him to roll out of its mouth. The whole ordeal had only lasted five minutes, but Finn and his friends would remember it for the rest of their lives. What a wonderfully crazy story! How would you have felt if you had seen your friend being swallowed whole by a whale? Have you ever had an encounter with a marine predator? Tell us about it in the comments. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next video.